Hey everybody, happy Thursday! Thursday is always a crazy busy day, but checking in and making sure everybody's doing good. And as usual, we've got a ton of material. And the audio works! Always a bonus. So let's jump in and go through everything. Uh, the theme today is kind of connected to what I discussed yesterday. And <laughs> disclaimer, of course edutainment, not financial advice, and math, money, and freedom. But before I jump in, a very, very important key to investing is to be able to see patterns and connectivity. And I used to always refer to this as connective tissue between different types of things. And today I'm going to talk about how everything is related for every effect has a knock-on effect, etc., etc., kind of like Newton's law. But let's just jump in, check out the market, and see exactly what's going on. So math, money, freedom, you guys know the drill. The day, a little bit bumpy, a little bit red. You know, people say, why is Bitcoin so weak? Well, it went from 40,000 to 55,000 in less than two weeks. That's one of the reasons. And I always talk about, you know, you're climbing up a hill. You got to take a rest every now and again. Ethereum has been super strong. Uh, Solana rebounded with all the other uh, smart, smart contract platforms. BNB is looking good. Polkadot was really strong yesterday and again today. Cardano is up, Luna, etc. So overall, looking good in the hood, as they say. So it's a 50-50 day, but that's okay. We'll take that. Now let's start jumping into some of the good news. And we'll talk, first of all, um, those of you who don't follow me on Twitter, I started getting very active in Twitter. I started the Twitter account a few months ago, and I think, I don't know if it's... Two and a half thousand, I think 25,000 followers, but I started to get more active because it's important to get the word out. And sometimes people are being misled. But Dan Held is a great guy. He posted this this morning and he said 98% of retirement accounts in the US can't access Bitcoin. That is a lot. That's nearly $37 trillion. So what happens when they do? Very good point. And as usual, I was like, hmm, let me run some of my math and some of my numbers. So I, I threw this up on Twitter earlier and in other places um, that will remain nameless. But basically, I ran the numbers using the multiplier that I use of 20 and assuming that 80% of retirement accounts could access Bitcoin over the next couple of years. And if those retirement accounts allocate 5% to Bitcoin, which is a recommended amount by many at this stage, it'll probably be 10 or 20% in a couple of years. But again, very conservative. This means the addition to Bitcoin's market cap could be about $29 trillion. The Bitcoin market cap today is just over $1 trillion. That'll bring it to over $30 trillion, divided by the circling supply of $18.8 million. We'll give a Bitcoin price about $1.6 million a coin in a couple of years if this happens. And all of this is theoretical, but extremely feasible. So, bullish. Uh, second of all, looking at the charts and everything else, I had to share this image. It was hilarious. This is the resistance for Bitcoin at $60,000. As you can see, it won't make much to get get through 60. One of the things I did mention as well, that we will probably have a $10,000 candle over the next three months at some stage in less than three hours. That means the price of Bitcoin could raise itself 10,000 in three hours by all the stuff that I see out there. Highly feasible. But let's go a little bit deeper. Let's talk about a quasi-Bitcoin ETF being approved on the 5th of October. So um, a lot of people are talking about this right now. This is where the SEC has approved an ETF for Bitcoin revolution companies. This includes companies that hold a lot of Bitcoin on their balance sheet. A lot of the companies that I actually hold. This is extremely bullish for my holdings and anybody who follows me and has been following me all year. They will have Square. They will have Tesla. Uh, they will have a couple of mining companies, etc. And uh, it's exciting. I think 25% of this fund will go towards MicroStrategy, um, BitFarms, Square, Tesla, etc. So watch that space. But the real message here is it's a precursor. And approving this type of Bitcoin, quasi-Bitcoin ETF, makes us believe that maybe on the 18th of October, we could get our other ETF. So this is the rumors swirling around. They've been swirling around for a long time, but they're getting more and more intense. It's like the thunder is rumbling. 
And at the moment, at least 13 uh, high profile companies, I think, have applied to the SEC for a Bitcoin ETF and they're waiting an answer. And many ETF experts say it is likely one or two or three could get approved in October, the first one being October 18th. I keep hearing that October 18th day. I've been talking about it for 30 days myself and uh, we'll see. But fingers crossed, that would really, really change the game. So now speaking of other news as well, and I've been talking about Bitcoin and gold since the beginning of the year. And I know a lot of people listen to me and they sold their kilogram bars of gold and they bought Bitcoin and they're very happy they did. But what was really interesting, this is a Seeking Alpha article, and also from some of the news from JP Morgan, obviously the total return for gold this year has been sucky, down 4 or 5%. I don't know what it is. Considering the macro backdrop, it's ridiculous. And Bitcoin is up a truckload. I won't even mention how much. But uh, the world's biggest cryptocurrency uh, by market cap, which is Bitcoin, has been proclaimed to be a better hedge against inflation than gold. This is what JP Morgan told their clients. You know, Jamie Dimon thinks Bitcoin's garbage and he's the CEO of the company. But JP Morgan is saying, hey, this is the hedge you want. And we've seen this over the last 30 days. The huge movement, particularly in the last two weeks, we saw Bitcoin go from 40K to 55.8K in less than 12 days or something, which is ridiculous. So again, the money is leaving gold, and you can see that from some of the gold ETFs and everything else, and it's moving into Bitcoin. And that's on top of the news as well I mentioned yesterday with like George Soros. He's a guy who knows what's up. He's a guy who can take down currencies like the British pound. So he is confirming to Bloomberg that his family that owns, I think, $3.6 billion have moved into Bitcoin. So that's it. Now, of course, we have to hear from Michael Saylor, uh, our cyber hornet. Uh, I'm going to read his tweet. He's very eloquent. But the implicit endorsement of Bitcoin by major banks and regulators is going to accelerate the collapse of gold and the rise of Bitcoin as a preferred safe haven store of value for both institutional and retail investors. There you have it, folks. But I had to get in on this, and I did this yesterday. Sailor's tweet is from today. This is what I did yesterday, and I got a little bit heated. And I'm normally not contentious on Twitter, but I've become so. Because when I see people manipulating people, I get very heated. And that's a polite word for upset or pissed off. So when I look at my reply here, first of all, I read the tweet. And that is everything that Peter Schiff says in his tweet is correct. But at the very end, he says, buy gold. Now, this is a man who sells gold and he buys other assets. He is not buying gold personally. He has not bought gold in years. He buys other assets. He buys foreign equities and he probably has some Bitcoin and God knows what else. But he's not buying gold. But he's telling people to buy gold. And that got me upset. So basically, I tweeted back at him. I said, but you are not even buying gold. So stop misleading investors. You sell gold to make money to buy other assets. But the funny thing is, my response comment to his has 30% more likes than his actual tweet. So again, got a little bit upset. So just be careful what you read out there and be careful who you listen to. And I know a lot of people respond to this saying, oh yeah, my father listens to Peter Schiff and he buys gold from Peter Schiff and everything else. And I think that's just a crying shame. So enough of that before I get too upset. Back to more good news though. Mike Novogratz, a big fan, he says currency, cryptocurrencies have gone over the tipping point. And Mike knows what's up. He works with institutional investors. He actually has one of the filings in for an ETF. And when he says gone over the tipping point, that means it is now publicly acceptable to invest in Bitcoin. And he says the energy in the space right now is off the charts and the institutional demand that he's seen over the last six weeks is like nothing he's ever seen before. That's why we've gone from 40K to 55K in a fraction, in a heartbeat. And uh, we'll see. So that's Mike Novogratz news, which is awesome. He also did actually mention two other things. He mentioned two other assets that are gaining a lot of attraction as well. That is Ethereum and Solana as major players in this market. They were the only three he mentioned, and he rarely mentions those other two as well. So I thought that was big as well. 
So, if you know who he's talking to, this is also cool. This is an article. A big thank you as well to Dr. Sanjay for sending this in and all the support that you give me. Uh, we are still early in India being very much ahead in the crypto world. And this is a cool tweet from DeFi India. Uh, 83% of urban Indian people are aware of crypto and 16% of urban Indian people have invested in crypto. But only 34% of India is classified as urban. So that means only 4.5% of people in India have invested in crypto. 94% of the world's most populous nation is still sitting on the sidelines. So that's it. That, the math didn't quite work out for me. It should be like 96%. But anyway, not to worry. It was a tweet and it's just a sign of the times. Everybody, in case you were not uh, convinced, we're still early. Okay, we might not be at the 2.5% adoption level anymore. It might be a little bit higher. It might be 3%, but we're still very early. So let's talk about some great Ethereum news. And I've been looking at Ethereum lately, and I, it's always funny when you start beginning to lose confidence in something that's when it comes back and you know impresses you so i was a little bit shaky in full confidence as you could read between the lines from stuff that i said here on the channel but the strength of ethereum over the last couple of weeks has been really really positive and big institutions are buying and that's what matters and also only 11 percent of eth is in circulation but according to this chart here you can see the line is about 36 25 that's the line of resistance we hit that today. We went a little bit over it. I was hoping to announce we were over it uh, for this video, but we're not. So when I started, uh, Bitcoin is at 53800 so we're up $52. And Ethereum was about thirty six seventy five, so it's gone up $25. But that key level there is $36.25, and we are 25 bucks away from it. If we can get to that and get beyond it, then we're going straight to 4,000 real fast. Mark my words. Now this cool chart here, uh, I can't remember, somebody posted it on uh, Twitter as well, but basically Ethereum is ready to run to $10,700 based on FIB levels and previous charts and fractals. And there you have it. It's pretty simple. Now the cool thing to note here is Ethereum could very, very quickly hit that 50, can't see it exactly here. The numbers are so small, but it's like 6,000, I think it was, or 5,900 or something like that. Very close to 6,000. Once we get through there, straight to 10,700. And that's how Ethereum moved in the last cycle. And that's what it could potentially do in this cycle. So hold on to your Ethereum. Don't give up the ghost. Again, it's about supply and demand and the institutional money per things like Nike, Nike, Mike Novogratz just said, he's talking to people about Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana. That's it. And the people he's talking to are moving billions of dollars. So let's talk about stocks for a minute. And this is part of the connective tissue. So I know many of you are here just for the crypto news, but I just want to share, this is about money-making ideas and understanding how everything links together. As I mentioned at the beginning, focus on what I call financial connective tissue and how all the stuff is connected. So, and it all ties back to Bitcoin, but this was a cool little graphic we put together today. Uh, a big thank you to our graphic designer who helped me with it. Uh, but basically, if you look at Square and the Cash App and Afterpay, which is what Square just bought, and the combination of Twitter being powered by Strike, underpinned by Bitcoin, this is huge and nobody realizes, Wall Street don't realize what this is capable of. The power of social powered by Bitcoin with all the connectivity that they have and the connective tissue and the ability to execute, the ability to transfer money frictionlessly, it's here. This is the bank of the future we're looking at, everybody. But nobody's talking about it. But just wait. Uh, just wait. So uh, again... In full disclosure, I don't own Twitter, but I do own a lot of Square. And uh, we'll see where this all goes. But it's very, very exciting. And of course, I had to tweet this as well. And I did call it the Bank of the Future. And Wall Street will finish it out. So nice work, Jack Dorsey. Jack Dorsey is the CEO of both Twitter and Square. And uh, he's changing things. And he's extremely strategic. He's like the Elon Musk of financial services, in my opinion. So moving on from there, speaking of fintech, uh, when you buy something nowadays, you are now presented with up to 16 different ways to pay at a checkout. 
for, you know, from anything from Apple Pay to Klarna to Square, Cash App, whatever else. And fintechs, fintech companies have now originated 38% of all U.S. unsecured personal loans this year so far. That's up from 5% about seven years ago. That is staggering. It's probably going to be more than half very soon. So if you think about that, fin technology is coming. Fin technology is there. It's being adopted faster than banks can even figure out. Their heads are spinning. What's going on? What's going on? And uh, we'll see. So super exciting time to be part of this. But why does it matter? Why am I talking about fintech? Fintech is things like Coinbase. So if you look at this and those of you who are excited about Coinbase earnings, this is from the block crypto. You can see the amount of fiat market share, fiat exchange market share. And the dark blue at the bottom is the one growing fastest with the highest market share up to 28%, I think it is right now. And that is Coinbase. People dump their fiat into Coinbase to convert it to either a stable coin or buy crypto. The, the quarterly earnings for Coinbase are going to be extraordinary. Mark my words. Uh, so anyway, I also hold Coinbase. <laughs> and I mean, you can see I'm very bullish on all things DeFi and crypto and anything related to crypto. That's what my portfolio looks like. So in uh, speaking of that, this is related to kind of the reducing reliance on the US dollar as we go forward. Very, very interesting time. And it was a report by the Fed, and they were talking about how they believe the US dollar is fine as the global reserve currency for now. But in the long term, they believe there are three big challenges coming. One is the European Union, two is digital one, and three is digital currency, i.e. cryptocurrency. So you know uh, the US is going to focus very hard on getting a Fed dollar together real quick, as is the European Union. And anybody who wants a CBDC? I certainly don't. Anyway, enough of that. So back to stocks and Tesla, who own a truckload of Bitcoin on their balance sheet. Hopefully they'll announce, I know it's an earnings call right now, but hopefully they'll announce that they will be taking Bitcoin again soon. But uh, they are rolling at FSD 10.2, Friday at midnight. It is unbelievable what this is. And again, nobody quite really understands how fast this thing is developing. And if they nail it, it's game over. Tesla to the moon. It gets better every few weeks. I know I have it. I'm also a beta user. It is absolutely stunning how it learns itself. And nobody realized that. They still think it's a car company. It's not. And if you talk about their power game and everything else, it's not. So anybody, everybody, I think Tesla hit $809 today. It's been crazy strong, but it's just the beginning. So we'll see. Let us know a bit about bad news because we can't just be all hopium. So let's mix in some bad news here. So risks for the stock market, which could actually be good for Bitcoin as a flight to safety. But the three biggest risks to watch for now, um, obviously the stuff I was talking about months ago was stagflation risk. The chance of pro-cyclical inflation turning counter-cyclical are growing and nobody likes the stagflation word. And for those of you who don't know what stagflation is, miss my old videos on it. It's basically when you have high inflation and slow growth, and it's not good. So also, uh, the Evergrande stuff is still a little gray cloud on the horizon, but that could burst the Chinese property bubble, which could bring down a bunch of other dominoes. So we're monitoring it carefully. Right now, the US markets digest it really, really well. So we'll see what happens. And then finally, the third big risk is tightening the monetary policy in the US, i.e. less money printing. So we'll see what happens. That could be a little bit of a headwind for stocks and bonds, but I think crypto is going its own direction anyway, so not too concerned. And even uh, the hyper growth stocks like Tesla and Square should not be affected too much by this anyway. So we'll see. So I just want to share that. And finally, stable coins. Uh, for those of you, there is some FUD re-arising again about Tether. And this is a cool article from uh, Medium about which stable coins will survive. So obviously the spotlight is back on Tether, but there was a couple of cool things in this article. One is trusting a government or trusting a company behind a stablecoin is the same. Who do you trust? You know. Second of all, uh, stablecoins are not insured. Third, CBT, CBDCs will have their way and they're going to 
either impede the ability of stablecoins to be adopted. But the only way stablecoins will survive, and this is a cool thing I loved about this article, is either a stablecoin that is backed by Bitcoin or a purely decentralized algorithmic stablecoin. They're the only two that are going to survive in the next five to 10 years. So uh, let's watch this space. Now, speaking about Tether and China, this is an interesting article here. But basically, um, Tracy Alloway tweeted, a Bloomberg investigation finds Tether holds some of its reserves in billions of dollars worth of Chinese commercial paper. And I guarantee you, some of that is Evergrande. So there's no doubt in my mind, I'm 99% sure Tether has exposure, even though they won't admit it. Uh, they say they don't, but do you trust Tether? I certainly don't. So we have to watch the space. There could be some fallout there, so be careful, everybody. And finally, when you look at the data, Tether market share is falling fast. Tether used to be the 10,000 pound gorilla owning everything, and you can see it's depleting, and USDC is grabbing market share, and uh, so is DAI as well. So we'll monitor this carefully, but please, everybody, just in case, Make sure you don't sit on a lot of tether in case it blows up and you have exposure. So hope you like the content. I'm going to open up some Q&A and a quick reminder as well. Um, spammers have accelerated, they've amplified. Don't give anything to anybody ever. It's all one second. You guys know the drill. And, you know, we've only had one person, I think, at this stage being scammed in four months, which is good. And the amount that wasn't that high. So fingers crossed everybody out there is safe. So let's jump in and do some questions. Oh, a lot of questions already. Oh my God. Handel Carter. Where's Luke? I was worried when Luke, I don't see Luke. He's going to worry first. Uh, you talk about GBTC, never GDLC. I don't like the large cap trust. It holds a whole bunch of crap, Handel. So ugh, that's why I don't like funds because if you have something that has 60 or something, or 10 of something, and one or two or three of them is bad, it taints it for me, and I just, I just can't do it. So, no, GDLC, garbage with their holdings. Check out what they hold, and uh, I wouldn't touch it. Always go for the pure form. Michael Connolly, what's going on with Matic? Losing patience. Wait, market wasn't realized. People were losing patience with Polkadot as well. Look at Polkadot. These things will come. The cream will always float to the top. Just be patient, and... Uh, by the way, I bought a truckload of Matic at a dollar and four cents the other day. Let's see what it's doing right now. Uh, some people, some people really are very easily irked. Okay, Matic's at a dollar twenty-eight. Okay, so <laughs> it's gone up twenty-five percent in a week. That's not bad. So hang tough, everybody. Uh, still looking good for three bucks at the end of this bull run. Um, Oves Ahmed bin Najib, how are you? Um, Bitcoin will top 130,000 along with ETH 12,000, Cardano 750, Sol 550, Dot 110, Link 90, Matic. What do you think? Uh, I don't think, I think Bitcoin 130, possible for sure. Uh, Ethereum, I think about 10K. But you know what? If Bitcoin goes to 130, it typically be a 10 to 1 ratio. So it could also go to 13,000. Cardano, I see topping out at four or five bucks. I plan to exit at three fifty to four dollars. Um, Solana five fifty, very very possible indeed. Maybe higher actually. Of all of these, I think Solana could go higher. Um, Polkadot one hundred and ten. I think my target for Polkadot is about ninety eight dollars, so that's close. Chainlink ninety. I have at least seventy for Chainlink. And Matic four fifty. My target for Matic is two ninety eight. I don't know how I know all these numbers in my head, but that's what I see. So I like I like your numbers, but they might be a little bit too optimistic for my liking, and I like to be safe and sandbag where I can. Uh, Gitanjili, uh, today I sold Engine to increase my sell position. Do you think it's a good decision? I was looking at Engine, and it was kind of doing, it was going up and down. It had a very good last week or so. Let me pull it up right now. Uh, I'm planning to sell my Engine at two bucks anyway. I should have done it last time I hit it, and I didn't because I got too busy. And I missed that opportunity. Uh, yeah, I think it's fine. I think $2, 220 is kind of the top for engine and then uh, move on. So there's just so much competition in that space. That's why I don't, I like the NFT space, but it's just rife with so much competition. It's crazy. Um, let me see, Caliglia, we do your own 12 rules of life for IA folks. Well, I, I think I have 12 rules of investing. Uh, 
I can make one up. Sure. Good idea. Um, but they're pretty simple. Um, but that's a good idea. I should do that. But scratcher, <laughs> that's a funny name, but isn't the ETF, but approving Bitcoin futures, not Bitcoin spot buy. How will you, that affect, how does it work? Well, basically anytime you have a future contract, you need an underlying asset. So if there is an ETF futures, Bitcoin ETF, uh, it will actually help to two things. One, it'll bring about more demand for more underlying asset. And two, it'll allow more money to flow into the asset because it gives the people to have a better tool by which to hedge the asset. So it's all positive uh, and that's how it works. So again, it's like me. I, I like micro strategy because I can manage my risk really well using derivatives. And if they didn't exist, I wouldn't be investing in micro strategy at all. So I hope that kind of clarifies that. Satwik Deshpanda, uh, what would Elrond price target be? I haven't done as detailed price analysis on Elrond, but um, let me see if I have it here. I do in full disclosure as well, own Elrond. I'm not looking for it to go up that high, but I think uh, 590 or something was my target. And yeah, 590 or 490, somewhere around there. It's one I'm, I can't remember, but I, I do plan on exiting Elrond a little bit sooner. And then I have a list of how I exit certain things first, but I'll always hold uh, certain things that I like. So I hope that helps. Alex, I hope well as well. My question is HUD8 underperforming these past several days along with Bitcoin pumping. I bought long-term HUD8 calls and I'm down. Whoa, when did you buy them? Because we got into HUD8 a long time ago, uh, under $4, I think, even less. Uh, and as you know, I got into CleanSpark heavy. In fact, my CleanSpark position is five times larger than my HUD8 position. I went in hard on that puppy. Um, so I think it'll come back. The mining stocks are going to come back. Uh, some are really, really strong. Like it wouldn't surprise me if I saw CleanSpark going straight back to 40 bucks. Uh, and HUD8 though was overvalued to begin with. So if you bought it around 10 bucks, it was probably too high to begin with. And check out my HUD8 arbitrage model from my mining video I did last week. Uh, you'll see exactly where I believe it could go, benchmarked against Bitcoin price. Uh, Gitanjali, are the meme coins hurt Bitcoin and layer one bull run? They are. They're, but the people investing in the meme coins are typically the retail investors. So there's also whale manipulation happening with the meme coins. And, you know, just, just playing with that stuff is just fire. It's a momentum manipulation play. So uh, be very careful. But it is taking um, attention from a lot of the retail investors who are led by YouTubers who are trying to get views. Uh, I'll always tell the truth. I don't care about views. If it's just me and 10 other people here, I'm happy with that. Um, but be very careful out there playing with meme coins. They're just like Doge is worthless. Okay. And... I think Shiba Inu is an imitation of Doge. <laughs> so, you know, just playing with that stuff is just dangerous. Ashley Mallory, thoughts on liquidity mining or yield farming worth the risk? I don't mind, don't have the time. Uh, yield farming, yes. Uh, liquidity mining, I am not familiar with that space at all. But uh, yield farming definitely is worth, for a very small amount of your portfolio, like 5%, um, it's 10%, it's worth it. Mo. Uh, too late to borrow against your Bitcoin at 25% LTV on Celsius. Liquidation risk at 18K. Uh, I don't think so. As long as you're not borrowing too much and you have other sources by which to repay it in the event that things went back, back ways, like that 1% chance. But it's always bad, though, to borrow to speculate. Like if you're borrowing money to buy an asset that will at least stay flat or appreciate, that has no downside risk, um, then I'd say yes, not too late. Handle Carter again. I have 1900 plus GBTC in an IRA. It is worth to take the hit and sell and just buy Bitcoin outright. Uh, we'd we'll be able to borrow against it. I think at this problem, I think the uh, handle last time I checked the discount, it's 13.5% this morning. So selling here, taking the hit, you're in a tax free account, maybe, but I think. Uh, I think you should hold tight because it's going to shake itself out. Wait till the 18th or 19th of October and see what happens. And if Grayscale is not approved, 
then reconsider that decision. But in the meantime, I just see too many signals pointing to some type of ETF being approved, um, futures ETF, whatever else, and that should have a positive impact down the line for others to be approved later. So Hamada, finally got my dad to invest. He wants to put five digits during the bull market. Would you go one Bitcoin or split 50% Bitcoin, 25 Yeah, normally I think... Yeah, I've, I've just uh, see so many positive signs now happening in the market with um, Ethereum right now. So I like the 50. It's nice as well for him to have three things. And I believe doing things in threes is good in case one blows up. You have two that are safe. So yeah, I think 50 or even 60, 2020 would be good. Not financial advice, but that's what I would do. Um, Nick Day, would you touch Monero? No. It's an interesting project. It is uh, privacy is very, very important, but I don't like Monero because it'll never attract institutional money. Institutional money will never put money into a privacy coin because then it'll be considered a shady type activity. And therefore, I don't invest in things that don't attract big money. Always follow the money, everybody. Uh, but Nick, good question. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh, would you favor residential or commercial storage units? Uh, what part of the U.S. is overlooked? So you go you go where the people are going to move to. So uh, the big moves are to places like Boise, Idaho in the U.S., Austin, Texas, parts of Florida, uh, I think it's South or North Carolina. That's where a lot of people are moving to. So uh, even parts of Colorado. Look at the uh, heavy concentration areas with both uh, jobs like s close to a city but with a lot of uh, residential real estate close by that's where you buy a storage unit um, that's what I recommend and thanks for your donation as well Letro2 Jeff Hamburg Praxia Alex playing with pastels and DD Cito got some new people today that's awesome um, let me see Eric any thoughts on BAT basic attention token yes I've analyzed it didn't like it. Let me have a quick refresher on BAT and why I walked away. Uh, hold on a second. But I have looked at everything. I just I want to make sure I remember exactly. Uh, yeah, bad tokenomics. The inflation isn't bad, but very centralized, very heavy insider distribution. And uh, the team and the project aren't exactly perfect. So, yeah, it's scored number 50 in the 58th percentile of the compendium, but not worth investing. I need to be in the top 30% to even entertain. Or it has to be a very exciting speculation. Buying something very cheap, that will bounce very high. I think something. MindFed. I'm skeptical of Web3. Decentralization web, I know it well. Uh, being possible how we will take down terrorists and scammer sites, thoughts. Um, I haven't looked into terrorism and scammer sites, but I do believe uh, the combination of crypto, blockchain, and Web3 will actually be able to better prevent scammer sites and terrorism if it's done properly. So, for example, kind of like akin to the slashing concept of somebody does something bad uh, in Twitter or Facebook or something, you're able to find them and kind of punish them somehow. So... I think that could be good. Um, I think uh, I I am very positive about it because I use a whole bunch of Web3 tools already. And I must say I'm very impressed. Santiago L. I started options with a very low amount on Binance to learn by practice your option strategy trading. Plans on synthetic loans vid. I have a bunch. Check out all my options videos. Even my very first videos, uh, uh, like the synthetic long I did on MicroStrategy back in December 2020. When I was just starting out, ignore the production quality, but the content is good. So I do, I do, there's a whole bunch of them in my, um, check the YouTube playlist for options and you'll see them all there. Uh, Alex, with inflation increasing due to the money printing, would it be a financially sound idea to buy an EV car this year as opposed to next year? Yeah, Tesla increased the prices of most of their cars by two to 3,000 yesterday. And, um, they will become more expensive. One of the things I like, well, first of all, if you buy a car from Tesla, they have really good financing available. So 
with very little down, which is nuts. You can borrow for a car for like 3%. Um, so maybe get your order in. You can't actually take delivery of any car right now. The other thing you might be foregoing is a tax credit from the government. And it's still up in the air if they're going to approve that or not. So I'd say hold tight for now and see. But uh, prices shouldn't go up that much more. Uh, Ralun, I'm a senior software engineer. I want to make money creating dApps. What do you think I should invest in? Learning coding or the ETH, Sol network, or even Bitcoin. So from what I understand, um, you know, Rust is a good language to learn on the Sol network. People like it, but I'm not a software engineer, so I, I can't really help you there. If anybody knows in the comments, Ralun, let me know. But I do know that when I look at the adoption and growth, that happens because it's very easy for people to build on this platform. So uh, if you want to build stuff and that has all the hooks and tentacles you need to create a successful dApp, that's where I would go right now. Follow the money. And also they're giving away a lot of resources to have pe to incentivize people to build more so than other platforms. Uh, crypto, Captain Ron, uh, regarding stock options, how bullish are you on CLSK calls at the moment? Or do you like any? So I got into a huge clean spark position. Uh, when it was at $10 and 73 cents or something uh, over a week ago. Um, and I like it a lot. Right now, it's still very strong. I think it's very close to 14 bucks today. Let me pull up my mining stocks. It has it, it was the only one that was green today, up 3%. It's $13.82 right now. And uh, again, I see it. If you buy something in the money, like a $10 or $12.50 coal, yes, uh, going out at least a year and a half, you'll be fine. Not financial advice. Options are very dangerous, but... That's what I would do. Um, but I sold a bunch of puts on CleanSpark and I bought a bunch of calls on CleanSpark because I'm extremely bullish. And they've done really well. They're up, I think, 230% in just over a week. Let me see. And Crypto Pete from Norway, how are you? Um, what is the likely price target for Bitcoin and engine's bull run? Well, I hope to get out of engine about $2.20. That's my plan. And Bitcoin, I think easily 100K. Everybody's talking about 100K. But a lot of people think it go a lot more. I have Bitcoin stuck in a trading bot that will not clear unless the inch Bitcoin trading pair reaches 0 0.002. I don't know that trading pair. I didn't even think people traded that pair. Wow. Uh, I'll look at that now. But uh, yeah, I think Bitcoin will, will double. Engine, don't know if it'll double. I hope that helps. Tony Fares. Um, hey, Tony from Australia. Want to know your opinion about FTX as an exchange for folks outside the US and why no one is speaking about downsides of crypto like money laundering. Uh, 99 or 98% of all money laundering is done using fiat cash and very, very little uh, with crypto. And if it's done on crypto, it's done using privacy coins like Monero. So, you know, any... You'd have to be a stupid thief to do money laundering with Bitcoin. Uh, so we'll see. Because it's there. It's immutable. you got a record forever. It'll be pinned to you. So uh, FTX is amazing. It's actually my favorite exchange to use. Um, I am a power user. And uh, I really like their fills and everything like that. So I promote FTX. I find their fills. I remember when I had limit orders in for Solana a while back, uh, my FTX ones filled way faster than my Coinbase ones. So just a simple example. And the spreads are also much tighter. German girl in Virginia, could you do a retiring crypto with current prices? It wouldn't be as exciting. So I was going to say like how you could turn $50,000 into a million bucks real fast. That was the vision of that. It's harder to do right now. Uh, like most stuff has gone up 4x, 3x, 5x. So it, it's really, really hard to do. Like I was buying Avalanche at 10 bucks and it's now at 60. And Solana at 20 bucks, it's now at 155. I don't know what it's at right now. Uh, so it, it's much harder to do. Um, but I'll think about it. I'll see if I can make some things happen. But again, it's it's easier when you can buy stuff cheap. And that's where June 22nd was just such a great day to go shopping. 
Um, Praxia, during the Q&A this morning, you stated it's likely you will not be holding DOT in your some long-term hold classes, Link and Matic. Why is this? Well, it's all about power chains and adoption. I need to see crazy adoption in the power chains and cross-chain technology to be convinced. But until I see that, uh, I'll plan maybe on getting rid of it. Plus, I, I don't want to hold everything. I just want to hold my core assets. And uh, remember, things like my my altcoin positions are not that big anyway. So, but I think Chainlink. I see. So part of the other reason is as well. Polkadot isn't tied to Ethereum. Ethereum has those great network effects, and if Ethereum 2.0 is going to be successful, Chainlink will grow with it, and so will Polygon. So, that's my other theory as to why that is the case. And Express Dense. And thanks for being on the morning session as well, Praxia. Express dense. Uh, when you said a few episodes back that Bitcoin would not retrace 80 to 90% anymore due to all of the institutional investing, what percentage do you see it retracing? And does that same logic hold for top all coins as well? Uh, no. So all coins go up faster, they fall faster. So the old ratio used to be if, say, Bitcoin goes up 5x, Ethereum will go up 7 to 10x. So that's kind of the ratio I, I always have in mind. And they fall in those same type of ratios too. So Bitcoin falls by 50%, your old coin could fall by 70%. Um, so from that perspective, uh, I don't see Bitcoin falling more than, you know, 30 to 50%, but it depends how high we go. If we have a, if we go up to 100K, we might come back down to like 60, 65K. If we go to 200K, we could come back to 100K. So that's the difference in where we go. If we go to 288K, we could come back down to 100K. So it just, it's a question of how high it flies. And if we have that true blow off top, that'll determine exactly how much things come down. And I believe a lot of uh, cryptos, you know, the novelty will wear off. People will get the pain and they'll see the pain of holding things they've been holding since 2017 and they still haven't gone anywhere. And they'll eventually just bite the bullet and say, okay, I'm done with this. I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to sell. I'm going to move to something safe. And that's going to happen. So you'll have some old coins that are just garbage will be ditched uh, over time. And believe me, 95% of them are garbage, maybe 99%. So hope that helps. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, Kevin Gauss. I already own crypto, but I want to buy one whole Bitcoin for my mom. That's so good of you. Oh my God, that's the happiest thing I've heard all day. Uh, you're a good son, Kevin. And I hope she realizes that. Make sure she watches me say that. Um, how do you recommend I buy it for her in terms of entry point limit, or should I do a market buy? Well, right now, there was a great wick. Um, was, somebody was asking me yesterday what they should place limit orders on Bitcoin at. Let me pull this up. I think we had a nice wick down to, where was it? Yeah, well, it's so, so sad because just, you know, yesterday, you and that wick down it was 50k, and then it shot right up. But that was early in the morning, 2:30 in the morning. We had a dip to 53k right now, a few hours ago, and it just gets bought up. And I can see the transactions coming in. Every, any weakness, it just keeps getting bought up. And every time big money comes in, it'll gap up. So the overall trend is up, up, up. I think Bitcoin could be weak. You might get lucky and see 51K, 52K. So what I'd probably do, if I really had to get my hands on one, get half now and use the other half of the money to buy in dips. And if it goes above 56K, just go go grab it. Because once it goes above 56K, which is a resistance level, it's going to go straight to 60K. That's what I see in the charts, not financial advice. Please do your own research. And Kevin, you're a good man. Uh, Cocoa Pebbles, <laughs> are you still wearing swim trunks now that it's full? Yeah, we had a huge rainstorm today and a big drop in temperature, so it was cold. So I am wearing long pants. So um, normally it, the temperatures really, really have fallen, but I, was, I had to go outside for a little bit to sweep up some rainwater off the decks. So... That's why I was wearing long pants. And thank you for donations as well. Robert Hanuki, uh, thanks for all the great value you give to us. Oh, you're so welcome. Um, and Chicken Wise, Forever Now, SKMF, Aristion, Joseph Puti, 
and Luna, Prometheus Fire, Andy. Good night all. See you all tomorrow. Be safe. I think just in closing right now, I don't know. We it looks like the money is rotating back in the smart contract platforms. But we shall see. Looking at the big gainers today. Poke it out strong. Elrond strong. Algo strong. MicroStrategy super strong. About to hit 700. So everything's coming. Everything's coming our way. So be safe, everybody. And watch for that connective tissue. See you soon.